So, um, <laughs> boom. I want to create quality product with video on the road. That requires more equipment. Um, but you also have to take into consideration, oh, thanks. But you also have to take into consideration weight in everything. Everything that you do, you gotta consider weight. So, there are certain things that you can't sacrifice. Like, I can't sacrifice my camera weight, you know? I want to take a DSLR. Now, you guys are using, uh, you guys are using um, uh, uh, camcorder style cameras. Uh, in video production, I mean, there's really two styles of video. There's, uh, who here is video? Okay, so you're intermixed everyone. Um, awesome. I wish I would have taken video courses in school. I never did. I learned all I learned from the road. And uh, when I started using DSLRs, it's kind of like Windows and Mac, you know? You're a Windows guy in the beginning, you're a Windows guy. You're a Mac guy, you're a Mac guy. And you find advantages for both, uh, for, for, for the camcorders and the DSLR. The DSLR advantages are, are very, you're sacrificing, it's a little bulky, it's a little bit heavier. Like, I don't know who's, you know, if you hold my camera, go ahead, it's okay. You know, you pass it around. That, that's my, that's, that's pretty much my setup, you know. Uh, it, that, that camera is heavier than your, than your camcorders, right? A little bit. And there are lenses that are even more heavy. Like, this lens is probably as heavy as your, you know, maybe as your, as your, as your camcorder. But I didn't want to sacrifice that, so I, I, I brought that type of equipment. How did I get into video? That, that's kind of an interesting story. When I moved to China, I didn't, I didn't have any video knowledge. I didn't know anything about taking pictures or video. Uh, but I got my hands on a camera, and when you find something that you really enjoy doing, it doesn't matter if you go to school for it in a lot of cases, you'll be good at it, you know. School's important, obviously, for, for the fine-tuning elements, but you got to have passion first. And I found that I had passion for video, and my passion exceeded, uh, exceeded my, my, my uh, previous knowledge. So I ended up not needing so much education for it because I had so much passion, I would read books and look at tutorials online and do whatever I could to learn as much as I could about video. I had a group called the Asia English Business Network and uh, when I came to China it was for business. So I wanted to find other business people that could uh, network so I could learn more from them, they could learn more from me. So I had these groups that I would, that I would organize. And it got up to really big. It was about 100 people would come and we'd all talk. I'd say, oh, I'm a trader. I'm looking for plastic products. And then you'd be a plastic factory and say, ah, I make plastic products. And, well, OK, let's do business. You know? And I used to have a camcorder. And I used to record the, record the meetings. One of the people in my group ran a magazine called the Ningbo Focus. Uh, I'm sure that uh, in Shenzhen you have you know local expat funded magazines. Yep. What? Yep. Like an English magazine? Yeah, we have the uh, what's, what's the red cover? Shen uh, Shenzhen Sh Weekly. Shenzhen Standard. Shenzhen Standard. Shen 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 yeah. uh, yeah, he actually writes right. articles for one of them. Oh, really? The, what's that one? Shenzhen and Swick. Shenzhen and Swick. Okay. Standard is more the business. Okay, okay. That was probably very much like the Ningbo focus. It was bilingual, focused on business. Well, the city, Ningbo City, approached them and said, hey, we'd like to organize an English TV show, an English show that would highlight what's special in Ningbo. And my friend who ran the magazine, she didn't know anything about uh, video. And the only person that she knew did video at all had two thumbs. This guy, you know, like, uh, so, so, I don't know how that goes. <laughs> Who has two thumbs and makes videos? So, they approached me and they said, hey, would you, uh, would you be interested in making the demo? Which was really cool. Because, originally, the show format was a four block, uh, a three block, uh, four minute each block, 12 minute show. And the first part was going to be an interview with a local expat. The second part was going to be events. And the third part was going to be an expose about something in the city. And the third part was going to be the Ningbo focused part. 
So I was just in charge of the last four minute segment. The other segments were for other things in Ningbo. So I took my uh, DSLR and I, I found a, a girl, a model, and I wrote a script. And uh, it was my first time writing a script. It was my first time doing anything organized in video at all. But uh, I, I picked three locations in Ningbo. One was a, a, a local uh, Chinese place called Chen Pong Miao, which was like a, a market, Chinese market. And then another place was uh, called the Constellation Bar. It was like a cigar bar. It was a really nice place. And then in between the two taught Ningbo Hua. Ningbo Hua is Ningbo language. Every, you know, you have Shanghai Hua and Cantonese, and there's a million different sects of language. And I thought it would be fun to teach local Ningbo language in the show, you know. So uh, created the segments, wrote the script. It was four minutes long. Four. <laughs> four, minute, four minutes. I went to school. Uh, four minutes long. And, um, and I produced it. Uh, I edited it all together on Premiere Pro, which is the Adobe, uh, you guys use Premiere, yeah. right? And uh, it was very simplistic, you know, but it was fun. I hosted it, so I would set the camera up, and then I would get in front of the camera. All the, uh, most of it was very static, you know, so set the camera up, find a good background, a good venue, make sure that DSLRs are not like camcorders, they don't autofocus, so you have to set your distance on the on the lens before you go out. So like, if I want to focus and I'm going to be one meter from the camera, I set the camera up and I'm about a one meter stride. Now I'm in focus, you know. Um, and a lot of my videos on the travel log we'll see later are are set like this, which is about a half a meter. So so I have done entire monologues where I've so now I'm at uh, I'm in Shenmue Miao. I'm about to go up the mountain. And uh, let's go, let's go, you know? And then I'll look at it, I'll be like, oh, gosh, darn it. You know, and I'll have to do it all over again, which is a great benefit to having camcorders, you know? So anyways, I submitted my four-minute demo to Ningbo Focus. Ningbo Focus took it to the Ningbo TV station. And the Ningbo TV, I, that's what happens when you love something, you know? You put all your heart and soul into it. And Ningbo TV was not expecting what I produced. I think what they were expecting was, Hi, my name's Matt. Today, I'm at Cheng Hun Miao. It's a very busy place. People come from all around. You know, here's a cut of a book. Here's a cut of a, you know. But instead, what I did was a very enthusiastic presentation of the city, because I was enthusiastic about the city. And they looked at it, and they said, you know what? Forget the 12 minute, four minute, four minute, four minute. It's all you. So you're going to produce the whole show. And, and you know what? We don't want anything to do with it. You produce it. You go wherever you want to go. You do whatever you want to do. Just make sure that it kind of looks like that demo that you produced for us. They were so excited about it. And for me, it was, I remember, it was like going from businessman, entrepreneur, trading company, to director, producer, host, you know, of a TV show. And it was, it was amazing. So I produced... 12, uh, 20, 24 episodes of the Ningbo Focus Show. I went uh, all around the city. You know, video is amazing. Not only does it allow you to express your creativity through the lens, I mean, you can produce whatever you want from that, behind that lens. And even you sitting in that chair, you can infuse your own personality in whatever you're shooting through that lens. Um, not only that, but it provides you a lot of freedom. Video is fun, you know? It's something that gets you out, and, 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 and you're doing creative things all the time. I saw all parts of the city in Nabo. I controlled my own creative element, you know, my own product. And via all this cool traveling and video, I gave myself a really good education. It was, it was forced education. I had to learn how to make a show. So like, uh, today we're going skiing. All right, well, let's buy a GoPro. Let's strap it to my, you know, to my skis. Let's figure out how to do stuff in cold environment. Let's figure out condensation problems. You know, because you know, going from the cold to the hot, 
the, on that one also we did a car, a car ride where we drove a car in the mountains. So I had GoPros attached to the side of the car and DSL. We had a conversation inside the car where it was like, well, where are we going today? Oh, we're going to, you know, you know, the, the, the ski mountain. Oh, ski mountain in Ningbo. I didn't even know. And the title of it was a cool day in Ningbo. But you know, it's cool to go ski. Anyways, <laughs> it was really, it was a really goofy show. But uh, it taught me a lot. So now, when I travel around the world, I can pr produce my own travel log. And now I have that background of producing that show. So I also knew about uh, video equipment and what I needed to produce what I wanted. Um, there's important factors that you gotta have if you're gonna produce video and when you're producing video on the road there is no and I'm sure you guys know this there's no chance for oh dude did you bring the tripod oh did you bring a little slider top to the tripod who does that you know oh it's back at the classroom oh sh sh you know there's, I have to take everything with me that I need, and I can't leave anything behind because everything that I carry is critical. Um, would you say you have some sort of uh, checklist before you left Ningbo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying that because when you go on location, you might want to produce a checklist. Yeah. Or gotcha. else you really? be SOL. Yeah, yeah. Out of Let's go through my checklist, okay? So, I have, not only do I need to take the video, but I need to edit and produce that video. So I have a, uh, a MacBook Pro, which a year ago was the best one you could buy. I just went on uh, Apple and clicked the top, you know, yeah, the best of this, the best of this, the best of this, and, and this is what produced, uh, came from that. I have this, which is a 10, uh, this is a 10,000 milliamp or something. This is like the biggest portable battery pack that you can carry with you. And it's, it's not so heavy, but... Uh, it's good. Because it, normally if you see the battery packs, that will be like a battery backups, like when you have a power surge or something like that, they're brick, they're yeah, like this. Yeah. I, I used to have one sold this since I moved international, but they're like this and they're extremely heavy, so yeah. It's, that can charge an iPhone 20, 20, 22 times, and it can charge my laptop uh, three times, from zero to full. It's not something that you're going to need. You know, you're going to need to rely on. But if you're editing and you want to produce a project, and let's say you're in the middle of nowhere, um, this also has plugs on it, so like I can be in the bush and recharge my my batteries for the camera itself using this. How long does it take for that to recharge? This is uh, I, I about about six hours maybe. I plug it in before bed. I have a power strip that I take. And like when I go and embed myself at a hotel, instantly this comes out. I've got my laptop charging, my, my camera batteries. It's like I'm a spider, you know, and there's wires everywhere. So these are my power. I also carry two, two uh, spare, spare battery packs and these. If you ever see this model, this, this, this is by far the best battery pack I've ever had. This charges my iPhone. 100% of the time for two full days. That's amazing. Full VPN is on, GPS is on, and this thing will run for two full days, which, which is great. I carry, uh, if you heard me yesterday, you heard me say that I carry hard drives. Four terabytes, four terabytes, four terabytes, two terabytes, Two terabytes, okay, and a total of sixteen terabytes. Yeah, and that's not including the space in the computer itself, which is uh, another another terabyte and a half. So, oh, oh, and you know, well the well the camera's running. I, I am I'm that's my finicky thing. I hate running out of memory. I hate getting to some place beautiful, beautiful and finding out that your cards are all full, right? And uh, I had an experience where my laptop actually broke uh, while I was in Guangzhou. My screen, my screen went bad. It was an Apple problem. And so I was not able to transfer my data from my cards in the camera to my hard drives. So I started to fill up my cards, right? I have 
32 gigs. I have 32 gigs. I've got uh, 64 gig SD. I've got 32 gig SD. I've got 32 gig CF. I've That's got, solid state memory, which is why he's really dropping them on the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. 32 <laughs> gig. That's great, isn't it? I got 32. And I've got another 32 in my in my camera right now. That's that's always there. So I almost filled up all those cards in about a week that I did not have my laptop. So it just gives you an idea of how much memory you can go through. I mean, you guys are just recording straight up, you know. So I have to think about the video that I'm taking because memory is something that is finite. You know, it's not infinite. So if I run out of memory. I'm, I'm SOL. I don't have any opportunity to gather any more beautiful footage. I have to think about it. I have to think about every shot that I do. So like if I'm shooting, uh, if I'm going to the mountains and I'm making a documentary in the mountains, I have to, I have to try to pre-plan and storyboard the action and the events as, as much as possible because every shot is so valuable because I only have the memory that I have with me, you know what I mean? And that's finite, so, 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 so. I carry a lot of extra SD and CF cards. You guys might not have ever seen these. These are, these are more for, uh, for, for DSLR cameras. Yeah. It's a compact flash. Yeah. A lot of DSLRs now will go SD, so that sort of took the lead and they're smaller. Yeah. Um, My camera has an SD and a CF slot. Yeah. But I find that the CF card, uh, the SD card, I have a very fast SD card. I bought it from DH, and uh, it's it it doesn't it can't it always shuts off. The camera is trying to put information on it faster than the card can write it, and I find that uh, uh, strange. It's a strange problem. The CF cards don't have that problem. So okay, so I have a lot of memory. I have a lot of batteries. Um, my I carry one. Uh, you, did you have these? These yeah. battery external battery. chargers with the, with the light. And yeah, the LED, just in okay. case. And then there's a few, few, few covers on there. I haven't found that I really needed any night shots. The DSLR takes such amazing videos at night, and uh, as long as you have a little light, that ISO catches up, and, and it gives you a really clear footage. Uh, so I have lots of batteries. I have. Audio, I have two Sennheiser systems for wireless, so if I wanted to do an interview or, or a more intimate style of sound, uh, I have that accessibility. I haven't used it so much because I can't wire myself up in all cases, you know, especially when you're doing yourself. Uh, it gets a little difficult. I have all my narrations are done on the H4N, uh, which is kind of a heavy device. It's one of my heavier items. Uh, I got a pop. I ordered one yeah. from uh, from Taobao. I lost my last one, but oh man, you get that beautiful close up. What does that do? <laughs> what does that do when you're speaking into a mic? It fixes the what? It's called a pop filter, and we'll use them when you do your oral presentations to sing. It gets rid of the P's and all, what we call the all the diphthongs, which is the uh, you know drama. That's all the the syllables that you have to over pronounce when you're on stage. P, ch, yeah. k, all so, that stuff. So the closer you get to get to a mic the better the sound is going to be in most cases. Right. If your levels are correct, you get closer, and it takes all that ambience out, and you get that really rich, like if you listen to the radio, this is X95.5, you know, that they're very close to the mic, and chances are they're talking through a pop filter. Um, everything that you put over this mic degrades sound. Like I have a dead cat that I put over this in some weather situation. You know what a dead cat is? A dead cat is that looks like a dead cat, kind of furry. But even that dead cat absorbs sound. So when the yeah. mic is picking it up, yeah, yeah. Uh, even that degrades a little bit of the sound. So if you can talk through a pop mic, you get some really, really nice sound uh, coming out of that. And as long as you don't have those pops coming through. I was just, I was just telling uh, Jason that I was, I was in, uh, I lost this. And I was doing a video a couple of days ago. And I had to take like, like, you improvise. So I had the dead cat, and I couldn't get so close because I didn't have this. And even the dead cat, every 
every P that I pronounced just blew, blew the mic out. And there was, there was no way it was salvageable. So what you have to do is you have to go here. Now when you go here, suddenly you hear the echo of my voice as it travels through the room instead of having that intimate sound of my voice. So the only way to fix that is to take, like, uh, I've done it, you basically like a kid, you know, you make those tents as a kid with, with seat cushions, you know, you build a little, you know, house, and it's hot outside. You have to turn the AC off because you can hear the AC, you know, running. So you turn everything off, and you cover yourself with a comforter, and I'm sitting in this thing with, with the, only the light from my computer screen, you know, with the script, and I'm... Hi, so I'm walking through this area, and I see a friend of mine, you know, and I, I have to, you know, vocalize all my, all my things. So if you hadn't done all those tricks, you'd be watching the travel log, and you're listening. You, your brain, when you're recording it, would sound fine, but then you put it in context of the, of the film, and you're, you're seeing imagery of him walking through a shop or something, but then you're listening to him in this big echoey room. It would just, it, it would be like... The whole 180 degree thing, it just, you don't know what it is, but something isn't right. Something's amateur about it. So you have to record narration or audio completely in a dead space. That's why you see the recording studios are always insulated with all types of foam and pop filters and things like that. It's to get it to as dead as you can possibly make it, and that makes it more professional. Yeah. And you can add echo later. Right. You know, it's always better to start from a neutral environment and right. add whatever you want, whether it's bass or travel. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 And, and, but if you have built-in echo to the raw recording, there's nothing you can do with that. Yeah. 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 Great. I, uh, I have my mics. I have a variety of lighting. Uh, my, my babies are, are my lenses. Each one of these lenses is probably about $1,000. They're very expensive, you know, because... You have the base, which is the, the body of the camera, which is just this part here. This, this camera is like $3,500 just for this body. It's a full frame SEMO sensor. So it's, 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 it's got, it takes just fantastic video and pictures. Uh, this lens is a wide lens. If you, you know, I'll show you. Rich colors, you know, the colors are very rich. And then if you look at how it moves, with this wide lens, the edges are, are, are you know, softer because it's got that wider, wider uh, the fish eye type. fish eye look. And what that happens is, is I can go and I can do, I can do a video where I'm looking at the camera and maybe my arm is shaking a little bit, but you're not going to lose so much quality in the center center zone, you know. So that's that's a 1635. But then the cool thing about DSLRs is that each each lens has its own personality. So now let's look and see what happens with, uh, with the 24-105. I had a cameraman that worked for me. His name was David. He was, he was British. Yeah. And David was, you know, he's like, you know, Mark, I went to school for video. So I don't know, you know, you might not know. And uh, he, he got so nervous when he held the camera that it would shake, you know. And he's holding my lens, you know. I'm like, Dave, Dave, calm down, man. He's like, man, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> Don't look okay. Anyways, so so this is uh, this would be the uh, the zoom lens. Now the cool thing about this is that uh, you can let me bring it in, you know, a little closer. But you see, I have complete control over the focus. So for example, well, I'll use the other lens as, a, as that example. So, but if you look at me record myself, let's see, I have to, I have to mark myself. So I'm about, about here. Am I in focus? Can you see me? Am I about in focus? Yeah. yeah. But it would be very easy for me to bring myself out of focus, you know, you know, so you have to. When would be a time if he's shooting something like this in his travel log? When would it be a good time for him to actually go put himself out of focus, especially with the wide angle? Film people, huh? There's something beautiful in the background. He's talking about it, and then he focuses on it. Yeah, you know. And without a cameraman, what I have to do if I want to do that is I can, I can. I'm pretty good. I mean, this camera is part of part of me. It's like an extension of me. It's like my kid. 
So like I can actually kind of pull over it and guide it. But you can also see that the light coming in from the windows is totally killing, killing the bus here on the lens. Anyways, so this is my uh, this is my lens I use for most of my like if I'm walking and talking, I use this. If I'm uh, if I'm gathering B-roll, I use this B-roll footage that you are using to accompany the narrative. If I'm going to uh, go out and specifically capture beauty, then I use, use this baby. Right here. Now this is awesome. This is a macro focus lens, and this is designed with specific purposes in mind. Okay, teach. <laughs> you see what happens? Uh, here, get closer. Not too close. But you can see that the depth of field is extremely shallow. So right now his nose is in focus, but his ears are starting to lose focus. And if I go back, I can capture the boxes in the back, and then his face is there. It gives you a really, like, like if you're doing an interview with somebody, and you really want their face, like you want to give that interview personality. You want to see, like, old people, you know, like they have the wrinkles in their face. Uh, I, I, did a, I did a little expose on, a, on an old man that was a principal of a school and he was leaning over teaching the kids. I use this lens because you can kind of pull in. Am I, am I boring you? I'm sorry. No, sure. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm like, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> but uh, so, so, bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so that's, that's each, each lens that you get. And, if you were to look at the, like, lay out every lens that's available for a DSLR, they, they can go this high, like, literally high, you know, like, those big telephoto lenses. And each one gives you a different thing. But you have to kind of understand that on a trip like this, I have to decide which lenses are going to be most useful for me. So I feel like these three lenses give me the complement of shots that I need in order to produce what I need to produce. So I have... Uh, I also have an external LCD, which I haven't used. I haven't used once. The wireless to the camera? No, no, it's okay. HDMI. It's a little, it's a little bulky, and uh, most of the time I'm shooting myself, uh, and doing that is, is too difficult. Right. But I'm, I'm trying to bring enough gear to prepare, prepare myself for things that might eventually come up, like the lab mics that be for an interview, say, down the road, and I want to be able to have that ability, uh, so that's why I carry it. The same with this, is if I'm doing a, maybe a higher production value uh, travel, travel log, then I can do that. I also carry an uh, intervalometer, so I can do, um, another cool thing about DSLRs that's different from camcorders, right. is that you can shoot it, beautiful, uh, beautiful photo photos. So I could go outside in the park and set an intervalometer to take a picture every 30 seconds, right? Every 30 seconds it'll snap a picture. Every time it snaps that picture, that picture is like, that, you could set this on raw mode, 26 megapixels. I mean, you could take a small corner of that and blow it up and that could be part of your video, right? Because every frame of your video is a picture, you know? And this is literally every frame is a picture. And you can set your camera up to, to take a picture every 30 minutes for two days. And then you lace them together, 24 frames a second, and you've got a five minute you know, cycle through of two days. So I carry that with me as well. So you may ask, and I, I, I'm pretty sure our cam even our cameras, we can take in the standard mode, mm -hmm. standard definition, and they do shoot photos. I don't think you can do that. That will have to be, I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, like the opening of House of Cards that we watched, that was the opening sequence of that, that show. It's all time lapse. And why do you think they would have to use the remote like that, as opposed to just hitting the button every 30 seconds? It was going to shake the camera, and that will totally screw it up. The camera has to be completely still. Yeah. We're on a really smooth, super slow uh, tracking shot, tracking uh, rail or something. Yeah. Yeah. They'll weigh down. They'll actually put a, you know, they'll weigh down the, the tripods. I don't know if you got a, you don't have a hook, but most, some of them actually have a hook, you know, so you can carry a bag of weight down. And literally, they want that tripod to be as stable as possible, you know, not not that <laughs> what I just did. But uh, so so I've got light, I got camera, I've got mics. This is my main mic. This road mic's great. This is their newest uh, their newest uh, uh, 
companion mic for DSLR cameras or whatever. Uh, it just sit, it sits on the shoe on the top, just like you got the shoe there for the for the for the mic. Um, uh, what else? I uh, bags and stuff. I carry everything separated and and I try and keep things as organized as possible uh, because when you're on the road, you're const like like me. I'm constantly accessing everything. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly accessing my GoPro, which is attached to my, my uprights. If I want a tripod shot, I got to get in my bag. I can't have I can't have a lot of clutter. I got to know exactly where everything is in order to access it whenever I can, because travel logs and travel documentaries that are like this are completely free for. You know, when I leave. One place, like you guys, you guys know Shenzhen pretty well. You've been here for a little while. You know that, uh, what was that mountain? Uh, or, 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 uh, Nanchang. Nanchang. Yeah, if you're going to go to Mount Nanchang, you know that, okay, I think I'll set up a shot here. You, you know, mentally, you're looking at the area in your head, right? And you're saying, uh, if I want to go low to high, I'll have to go here. If I want to go high to low, I can set it up here. If I want a riding shot, this curve area in the street will work for me. You know, you're going over those things in your head. But my journey is completely new. So if I'm leaving Shenzhen to go to Guilin, which is my next big ride, I have no idea what I'm going to run into. So I have to completely, uh, and if you're in video, I know that you're all the same as this. You ever, when you were a kid, before you knew that you liked video, did you like Everything you did, it would felt like it was in a movie. Like, right? You're driving or you're walking down the street and you're like, uh, I always thought of the third camera being up there, the music. I always, I always put music to my light, you know what I mean? Like, so you're walking, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That song I heard on the radio would be really good if this was a movie right now, you know? And then the camera would be coming up from my feet, you know? So you're thinking about all these things. Well, I have to think about that all the time and put it into action. So. As I'm riding to Guilin and I see a rise in the road, ah, geez, it would be really nice if I set a camera up on the other side of that rise so it would catch me riding over the hill. That means that me, all 400 pounds, 160 kilos of me, have to stop, have to set up the camera, ride out of view, ride back, capture the camera, and then put it, uh, review it, because sometimes it's not even good. Like, oh, I should have turned the camera down. I mean, it takes a lot of time just to make a video, let alone try and make a video when you're actually moving, you know? And if you're doing it solo, it means you don't have, hey, could you go up over that rise and catch me as I ride over? Yeah, sure. No, I'm that guy telling me to do it, so, so it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so, and then when I get to a location, like I get to Guilin or like I get to Shenzhen, um, it's completely intuitive. Sometimes I know, okay, Huangshan Mountain, there's, there's the mountain. You know, I know that that's a mountain there. I can go online and do some, do some searching. I can say, okay, I'll, I'll probably need to go to this area and go to this area, but everything is intuitive. So you gotta have your equipment straight. You gotta figure out what you need as quick as possible. Like, like a, what do they call it, like a road, I'm not a road kid, but like, I, I need to know the most necessary items to take with you. And you need to be prepared. You gotta have all your batteries charged and your, and your carts cleared. <laughs> Cause God knows I've gone out with full carts and you're like, oh, I don't wanna delete that. I'm oh, sorry, you know, <laughs> gotta go. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. So you, you got into, one of my big questions for him today was is, because a, a lot of what you're doing, a lot of work, when you're talking gear, you're talking the type of shot you're getting, did you get the shot, did you not get the shot, in what IV film role, or any movie role, what was the IV terms, but what role is that? The cinematographer, right? And, and that's a big one. And a lot of, a lot of you are going to want to do that, especially if you're techie people, okay? But without a story, you have nothing to film. And I think about, in the editing, because the story's there, he, he, you know, it's the story. But... So my question to him was, and maybe he can talk about this, is when does the editing occur? Because, you know, he, he's probably not storyboarding in his off time, or he's not riding his trike down the street, right, drawing his storyboards. Where do you, 
I, I assume it's a mental storyboard. How do you edit it? Are you are you thinking of your next travel log, the plot? I mean, obviously there's many hours on the bike. So how does that? How do you think through travel log nine when it comes out? Where is that designed, and what's your process of? Okay, so I'll describe a little bit, and then maybe we can watch one. Okay. Uh, but first, I'll I'll say like what I normally do. So. Um, I, I had done the, the travel show in Ningbo already, so I had some idea of, of beginning, the middle of an end, how to capture that on video in an interesting way, or I hope interesting. <laughs> That's the object, right? Yeah. To make something interesting. So I knew what other people did, and I knew that I wanted to be a little different. And so, uh, <laughs> so uh, um, the, 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 normally, the beginning of my show uh, always has a intro, like a short bit before the credits, before the opening credits, where you introduce the subject matter, whether you're getting the person emotionally involved or you're kind of taking them from the last chapter into the next chapter because all, all, all my stuff is a path. It's, it's, it's subsequent chapters of a continuing journey. So. Um, I, I, I like to do stuff whether it's in my hotel room or like riding to the location. Uh, a lot of people could say, well, you know, you're not riding a lot in your videos. You know, your videos are about the locations as opposed to riding. Well, I'm always going to be riding for five years, you know. So to, to focus too much on that would be to dilute uh, the topic so much. So I focus on culture and people and places. So in focusing on culture and people and places, I, I, I give myself a really cool platform to do the opening narrations. You know, hey, I'm riding, I'm riding to Guilin. I'm not sure what I'll expect to see, you know, but uh, I know that Guilin is has a rich history or whatever. I, I always try to do a little research so that I can familiarize myself with a location. So I use the trike, I use the hotel in the beginning as kind of gearing up. Then it's kind of a crapshoot because you're, you're always trying to, um, what you might set up in the, in the opening shot might be completely different from Guilin that you get to Guilin. You might find out that it's not at all about culture, it's about people. Or you might find out that it's not about people at all, it's about a place. That, that you weren't prepared for. So um, you're always tweaking the storyboard, but you have to have something in your mind as a base, something to go on. So before I get to Guilin, uh, I will look up a little bit about Guilin. I will understand the ride, because to get there is, is the beginning part of the story. OK, so I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I've got some mountains to go through today. It's going to be rough, but Guaylin's going to be worth it. And when I get there, I'm going to go here. I'm going to see this. And then when you get there, maybe, you know, that's the other thing. Like, as a who would who would do that? Who would uh, who would change the video in route? Would that be the producer the, or the, the director? The director. The director role. So whoever the director is of each film, okay. that's pretty much who's going to. Yeah. So I mean, push that. as a director. I have to say, okay, this is not the way it was, it's the way it's going to be, and if I need to make this adjustment to the story, how do I make the story work, right. and the video work, in order to change the story, you know, officially. Like, uh, I think one of my episodes, I, I ended up extending my trip, and I had to, uh, I was expecting to leave. Oh yeah, the end of this day is gonna be my last day here in Jenga Jen, so you know, oh my day in Jenga Jen's coming to a close. I, I said this so many times, and then at the end, uh, this guy said, "Hey, you want to stay one extra day because I want to show you this other place." I had to extend the story, and I had to create video on the fly in order to support that that script change. Basically, it was a script change, um, and it's fun, but it's also a headache. You know, when you write a script for most of your videos, most video work, most video work is extremely pre-planned. So shot A, shot B, support video for those shots, boom, boom, boom. And then when you're sitting in the editing room, you're like, okay, this, 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 this. But a lot of what I'm doing is extremely interpretive. 
Like, I don't even, I have an idea in my head, but when you lay it all together, sometimes I carry the camera around and I'm walking around gathering stuff that I'm not sure how will go together, but I know it's needed to support a story that I'll come up with a little later. So it's a mixture of pre-planning and also in interpretive design of, of stories. So, um, I mean, we can watch one so that you can see. Uh, we want to make, and we'll make sure we leave time at the end so we can get some good, this good camera shots. We'll let them kind of go funny with the cameras. So yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Plenty of time around. Good. Which one were you thinking of? Uh, you can go stinky fish. The world. Jayo. I can pause there so you see. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, about your experience, the audio jungle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a music guy. Uh, you have to go with what you're good at. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good at trying to capture moments. And uh, I noticed, I hate watching a video again because you're like, oh my god. I, I warp stabilized that one picture where I turned too fast and the warp stabilizer kind of like made it look like it was, it was, it was psychedelic. Anyways. Uh, I thought that was an effect. I was like, how did he? Yeah, do you like that? <laughs> okay. I meant to do it. Uh, it's, a, it's an Adobe uh, function. It's called Warp Stabilizer. Normally, if you have a little bit of shake, it can kind of smooth that shake out. But if you have too much shake, it tries to torque things too much. And it did that in that occasion. And it kind of gave me a little queasiness. So um, I use Audio Jungle, which is a free uh, website to browse pay for uh, music. And uh, I love it. Uh, the music here was pretty professional sounding, right? It was, it was okay, you know, and they have rock and rap and, and uh, background ambient music and all sorts of stuff that, that guys from all over the world are producing on a regular basis. And you can kind of go in and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this song for this part and that song for this part because I, I like the idea of using music. I, I like the feeling that you get from the right piece of music on the right part of your video. And a lot of times, I'll sweat over a, over, over a part of my video music-wise and it'll stall me until I can find that right piece of music. And then when I find that right piece of music, I can just, I can just finish my project so quick because the music dictates how to lay in the video. So, like, Emotional Journey is the, uh, the opener that, that in, the, in the beginning portion and, uh, and the others as well. And I always try and give, if I do use somebody's footage, I always try to give them credit and the, the description on my YouTube page as well as at the end uh, of my videos. And it's nice when you can put produced by you and everything is produced yep. by you. Yep. Right? Produced by in something like this means <laughs> editing, yep. Narration, yep. Story, yep. Cinematography, yes. <laughs> everything, you know. So you will luckily get to work in teams for a lot of your things, but there might be times that you're doing something like this in this class or, or later on on your own. So. Yeah, and you know, this, this, this episode was a good example because uh, it, was, it was more like food. You know, like, like I had to eat and also understand the distance between the lens of my face and whatever item I was picking up. You know, it's a lot more difficult than you think it is to self-produce, especially with the DSLR, you know, because I don't even have a camcorder that's doing autofocus. So, you know, but, but you couldn't really get that beautiful depth, depth of field that you can, you know, necessarily with a camcorder. You can control that, that fish kind of coming into focus or, or that food coming into focus, but doing it by yourself is a is a totally different animal, you know? So, so, and then at the very end, when I was talking about Tunchi Laojia is an old street, that's all, that was all narrated, you know, uh, back at the hotel with this. And, you know, you, you probably couldn't tell that it was necessarily different from the audio that I was recording in general because it has to flow together, you know? So, and all that audio was, uh, that, that was shot with those people. That's right there. Was a very small and that's why you, you know all these the DSLRs have they have built-in mics with little holes right oh, there. Oh, horrible! So that you can't use that. It's, it would it just would it would be way too amateur. The crazy thing with DSLR audio is that when you do this, you can hear it on the mic. 
Yeah, it's horrible. That's why you have to have an external mic on, on floaties so that it's taking that vibration and sound out from the body and the ear. Great. Well, I think we're out of time. If we have some student questions, we need to ask them now because we need to have time to put things away. I want to get some cool shots of just on our video here. Uh, everyone needs to take a, a Jayu.com type card you can have. It's got the little skew that takes you to uh, biography type things and all that. So uh, let's thank you for coming out and we want to hit some questions first. Any other questions that have yet to be asked? I know with sports science, we're going to talk a whole lot more about that on Thursday and try to create a, an actual project before he gets out of town. I want you all and whatever film students can be involved, or if it's sports science and film, we have about five of you that are in both um, to be able to do that. We want to film it and we want to do some uh, data collection on, on something that we can actually use. We'll use the uh, we'll use a lot of the cycle computer. Uh, that's all online. We can get that stuff anytime. But while he's here, we want to strap him in and uh, take some data. So um, any questions that come to mind? Nicole? Um, when you go to like a restaurant or something and you want to like do a video shot of you in the food or the room, do, mm -hmm. does anybody like comment or like tell you not to? No, no. I'm in China. And I'm, I'm a big bald white guy. Pretty much everything I do is strange to them. So, <laughs> just adding to it. I just, I just do it. You know, like, I, I'm actually a pretty nervous guy. Like, I'm actually, inside this, inside my body, I'm extremely antisocial. You wouldn't believe it, but, but I am. I'm always fighting with myself. And I always miss shots. The, damn, that kid was playing, and it looks so perfect. And all I had to do is, but I'm like, I don't want to take a picture of a kid. I don't know how I'm going to think about that, you know? <laughs> you know? I'm going to see that one for later, you know? You know, so, so I'm always debating on that. Going into restaurants is the same way. But what you end up doing is you just push through and you do it and you just deal with it. Deal with whatever anybody says and nobody ever says anything. So what you end up having is a great video that's authentic that, that you know, you've got some people in the background that are kind of like looking, you know, and whatnot. But I like that in, in my form of video, you know, so, so that's good. It's the same. Well, I'm glad you said one of my students that had to leave, he said, I could never do that. I'd be too scared. I'd be too scared. I, I, and I said, afraid of what? And he said, I'd be afraid that my trailer would fall off. I'd be afraid to go to the restaurant. I'd be afraid to, that I would get lost. And so what insecurities do you just have to overcome to do All this? Of All of them. I mean, you know, I mean, I, we can get dirty here. I, I got to poop on the side of the road. <laughs> That's gross. And again, I mean, you're in China right now, so it's not too it's big. Not gross. I mean, you know, <laughs> to tell my friends back home. I mean, you know, like you got to do what you got to do. You know, you got to live life on the road. You know, you've got to sacrifice cleanliness and uh, you know some things, and you know, uh, you, you have to understand that that's just the way it is. And I could get hit by a car as easily out in front of my house in any part of the world. You know, so there's a fear of danger. There's a fear of getting sick. There's a fear of doing, like, like I'm riding around on a, on a billboard for weird things, you know? Like, if there was a billboard for odd things, I would be on it, you know? And, and when I'm riding around, I attract a lot of attention. And, and you know what happens is it ends up turning on you. It, tar for, it starts off as an as a, as a insecurity, but then you start to feed off of the attention that you're getting. And then it, over time, turns around, and before you know it, you're, you're embracing all of that weird energy that you were getting that was a negative. Like, oh, it's, all these people are looking at me. Now it's, hey, guys, hey, guys, you know, and, and I'm embracing it. You know, you let it in. I mean, I was really bad at public speaking when I was 17, 18. I had sweaty palms, shaking like crazy. I still am inside. I'm still that sweaty palms guy, but... You know, you push through and you, you just force it, you know? Yeah. And that's why you do presentations, and you'll do many, many, yeah. many. Yeah. Yeah. Get out there. Because yeah. 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 you'll always be nervous, but you, you have to do it. You have to figure out how to do it correctly. Questions? Kenneth? How long did it like, take you to learn how to fully use all the people here? Still am. I still am. Uh, you know, first time I did a video, it was just slicing layers together. You know, second time I did a video, I in infused some transitions. But the third and fourth time, I did too many transitions. You know, and then you have to 
pull back and then you're learning new techniques and I'm always going on YouTube and learning some, some new valuable item or new thing that, that imposes. You know, you're, every video challenges you to learn a little bit more. I always try to improve. I, you, you will never be perfect at everything, you know. But, but I would say it took me about a, uh, a year or two before I was producing something that I thought was, even, I'm not, I'm proud of that. You know, I'm very proud of what, what I've done. But I can look at everything and say I, I can do it much better today than I did then. You know, maybe talk about the because uh, we have yet to even open up After Effects, or maybe some of them have on their own. I I know this much about it. I know what it can do. I have no idea how to make that happen. But that's uh, the road we're traveling now. So, um, yeah, because the, the whole your, his Adobe After Effects was the, uh, the Jio. Jio. Yeah, right. That you saw earlier the anime. I mean, the, uh, After Effects is amazing, and I haven't even I haven't even touched the precipice at the beginning of what is capable with that software package. I mean, I would really love to be able to do some more keying, and uh, you know, using using background footage keying as you know, laying in a layer on a green screen or a blue screen or something, and uh, maybe doing some more. Like uh, I had a I had a small series. If you guys go to my YouTube page, if you can, uh, I would love for you to join and subscribe. I've got a lot of videos there. I've got one video series called Matt's Reef Tank. It's about my, my reef tank, uh, my uh, marine saltwater reef tank in my old office. And I use a lot of after effects on that to bring in titles and lay things over and tell little stories. So if you're interested in seeing some more of that. But I don't have the time for these videos. In, 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 in Premiere, the way, because they're, they're doing, uh, they're, they, they can do dialogue, they can do text and all that. They're starting to layer that in and everything. Yeah. But you're real limited in Premiere. That's pretty much a video editing know, linear system, mm -hmm. After Effects will give you 100 times more options, even to just using, you know, text. Yeah, yeah. It lets you animate it and all that cool looking stuff that you'd want to do. Yeah. Questions? Can have another one. Go for it. Uh, you made montages of your trips. Montage? Like a musical and montage? Yeah. I like that, but, you know, montages are maybe at the end. Maybe I'll put together, you know, a montage of all the food I ate or a montage. But right now, it's, I'm just, you know, it takes me about a day and a half, two days to produce one episode. You know, because I do the sound lay-in. You know, I, I have to, I have to take, like, I, I take video, right? This, 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 this uh, show was probably two and a half, three hours, if you laid them all on the timeline together, right? About three hours straight video. And this is title sequence and everything, 14 minutes. 14 minutes. So that means I've got to lay it all out, I've got to cut it up into pieces, pick out the stuff that I like, lay the B-roll on the second, second uh, layer, and then keep the narrative on the bottom layer. I've got to look at, I've also got to formulate the whole thing and say, okay, I think I, the story could be this way, it could be telling this sort of a story. And then, okay, I need narration here, I've got to cut it all out, I've got to throw it out. If it's two hours of footage, I watch that two hours of footage at least ten times. You know, it's a lot of time. You know, and most of the time I'm sitting in my bed, I've got my mouse, you know, because the the real creative stuff kind of happens at the end. When things are getting narrowed down and you're starting to, like, really choreograph. But in the beginning, it's just, oh, is, that, is that interesting enough to keep? You know, you end up talking to yourself, you know? I don't know, man. I always call it a monkey work, because a monkey could do it, but it, yeah. it's time consuming. Yeah, yeah. So if any of you guys want to do my one monkey work? Jai <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, um, can we? Uh, they're gonna have to leave in about ten minutes. The bell rings. So, can we grab the three cameras, get them off the tripods, and uh, shoot some moving stuff? Maybe around here, we want to get all 360 a bike at the very low angle, high angle, and have, maybe have somebody other than Keith or Alex Takako grab the cameras, deal with it, go. So, Xavier, Nicole, all of you other filming, you and Ashley, uh, you, you know, you're sports science. No, you're both. Ashley's the science. That's right. Okay. The new one. Uh, the cheese boat. No, you're not. You're a force on. Grab some cameras, shoot around, and uh, let's thank him for coming out. Absolutely.